Welcome back to the movie recap. Today's movie will be a 2020 British supernatural horror film titled Ghosts of War. Sit back, relax and enjoy the video. The movie begins in 1944 in a dark forest where Lieutenant Chris Goodson and his troop rest. Chris suddenly wakes up from a nightmare and notices a man's shadow in the distance. Chris slowly grabs his gun, but the man precedes him. He frighteningly asks for his intentions, but the man disappears after he momentarily closes his eyes. The following day, the soldiers are preparing to depart on their mission in the French countryside. They are tasked to relieve another squad of their post in the Helwig mansion. Sadly, they must travel for miles on foot before reaching their base. On their journey to the French countryside, Chris notices the Nazi vehicles from afar. His troop sets up booby traps to ambush the Nazis. As expected, the vehicle explodes and kills most passengers. Butchie commences one-on-one -on -one fight with the remaining German. Interrupted, Chris shoots the remaining Germans as they have no time to play around due to their mission. As they go on, they encounter Jewish refugees. Concerningly, Tappert approaches a Jewish mother and places his coat on her back. Next, he hands her the gold teeth he stole earlier from the dead German. Then, he passes her the Nazi patch, and they go their separate ways. The following day, the troop manages to arrive at the mansion. They notice a uniformed man sleeping in a vehicle outside the mansion. The man wakes up after the troop's presence startles him. Afterward, he alerts his squad of their arrival. As they enter the mansion, Chris and his troop are puzzled by the anxious and terrified movements of the squad they're going to replace. The team immediately packs up their things and leaves. But, again, the troops need clarification with their hasty departure. After a while, Chris and his troop roam the whole mansion. Tappert heads to the basement, Eugene plays the organ, and Chris goes to the library. Chris confusingly notices a burnt carpet with chair footing marks in the library. Later, he hears weird noises in the room and then investigates where it is coming from. Meanwhile, Butchie annoyedly lights his cigarette multiple times due to the wind continuously blowing it. Then, he notices a weird sound from a locked room near him. He curiously attempts to open it, yet it won't open. So, Butchie leaves clueless that it creepily opens on its own. After that, the troop gathers in the living room to converse. Suddenly, they hear a loud pounding sound upstairs. They swiftly proceed to the room producing weird scratch sounds, however, no one's there. Night comes, and the troop tells spooky stories when suddenly, a loud banging sound startle the troop. Chris assumes that it might be a message. Eugene immediately writes down the interpreted codes, and then the words I have no legs, appear. Then, a squirrel falls down the fireplace, which Tappert picks up after it startles the troop. After a while, Kirk is about to rest in Christina's room, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Helwig, when suddenly, a ballerina music box plays. Kirk then swiftly leaves the room as he assumes he is hallucinating. Later on, Eugene attempts to open a trunk in the basement. As he fails to open it, he finds a Nazi journal near him. As he silently reads it, he terrifyingly discovers the detailed fate of the Helwig family. Meanwhile, Tappert is observing the courtyard from the mansion's window. With his rifle's telescopic sight, he sees a creepy boy in the courtyard. Then, he goes outside to check if what he saw is real. Unknowingly, Chris worriedly spots him from the window. The next day, Chris, Eugene, and Kirk gossip about Tappert and his past. Chris is worried while the two are bothered by his presence. Tappert, pretending to not have heard their talk, suddenly walks in and reports his findings on the radio about the Nazis. Tappert suggests aborting the mission as he discovers 50 Nazis heading toward them. However, Chris firmly sticks with the mission despite knowing the risk. After that, in a storage room, Eugene and Tappert discover ritual and symbolic writings on the floor. Then, Eugene asks Tappert for assistance in lifting the antique cabinet to move. The cabinet's door suddenly shuts and crushes Eugene's fingers. Eugene angrily yells at Tappert and leaves even when Tappert denies the allegation. After a while, Kirk, Chris, and Eugene listen to the radio. Suddenly, Eugene's hand twitches involuntarily to form the phrase, if you leave, you die, as he transcribes another Morse code message. As they realize that the mansion is haunted, they now grasp the immediate departure of the previous squad. At night, the Nazi vehicles come to trespass on the mansion. Tappert sees them and immediately alerts his troop. As the Nazis cannot enter the mansion, they swiftly ride their vehicle to leave. However, they suddenly hear a loud banging sound inside and return. Alerted, the troop takes cover as they aim their weapon at the door. Unfortunately, the Nazis threw a grenade that made Butchie dives onto the grenade to save them. The shooting begins, and the rest of the troop scatters the mansion. Chris, hiding on the stairs, opens fire at the Nazis. 
When he runs out of ammunition, he lures one of the Nazis to the basement and attacks him. Meanwhile, Eugene hides in a library and grows terrified as a screaming ghost lady surprises him. Suddenly, a burning and screaming man appears in front of him. He repeatedly whispers, this isn't real, and the ghosts suddenly disappear. Simultaneously in the bathroom, Kirk hides at the back of the door while waiting for the Nazis to come in. Unexpectedly, one of the Nazis drowns in the bathtub as if someone must have pulled him in. Kirk grows confused. At the same time, Chris pretends to be dead while lying next to Butchie. He manages to stick his knife in one of the Nazis' throats and shoots the other Nazis approaching him. Concurrently, Tappert confusingly stares at the hanging Nazis with their hands tied. Puzzled, Tappert is unable to notice who hangs him there. Morning comes, and the troop remains standing except for Butchie, unconscious and heavily injured. Afterward, the troop places the Nazis in their own vehicle. Although shocked, Eugene and Kirk question Tappert why he strips the Nazis, yet, Tappert refuses to explain why. Sometime later, Eugene discovers that the whole attack from last night appears precisely the same to the Helwig family. The son drowned in the bathtub, and the daughter was hanged. Also, the father was doused with kerosene and burnt alive in front of his wife, which explains what Eugene saw in the library yesterday. Afterward, Eugene and Tappert converse next to Butchie. Tappert emotionally tells him about his past due to the trigger from the gossip he heard yesterday. He feels remorseful for cutting the blonde boy's head off, which he thought was a dream. The following day, the troop aims to abandon the mission and leave the haunted mansion. But then again, Chris does not want to leave and makes excuses. Afterward, Chris goes to the basement to search for Helwig's journal. As Chris finds it, Eugene, acting differently, forcibly grabs it. Minutes later, Kirk calls on Chris and Eugene to witness Butchie's state. Butchie wakes up and repeatedly screams, this isn't real, and it was us. Kirk orders Eugene to inject Butchie with morphine. Eugene snaps back to the real him and immediately searches for morphine. Then, Butchie exhorts Chris to remember something. Suddenly, he passes out right before Eugene injects him. After that, the troop decides again to leave the mansion. Luckily, they induce Chris this time. But, before they depart, they agree to end Butchie's life. Morning comes, and the troops abandon the mansion. On their journey, they grow speechless as they see the Jew refugees they saw the other day. Unbothered, they continue their journey away from the countryside. As the night's about to come, they realize they are stuck in a loop. So, in consensus, they all return to where they came from. Later that night, they all rest in a dark forest. Dreaming, Tappert is hanging on the ceiling, and his hands are tied at his back. Instantly, he wakes up and notices the word Vetrolek written on the ground. He wipes it all away right before the troop wakes up to see it. The following day, the troop continues their journey. To their surprise, the Nazis they killed a week ago appear in front of them. Unperturbed, they carry on with their departure. Hours later, they arrive back at the mansion. Believing they are cursed, they plan to give a proper burial to the family. However, the last page of the journal they acquired is missing, and they do not know where their bodies are. Back inside the mansion, Chris scattered flour on the floor to attempt to decoy the ghost. Successfully, the footsteps of the ghost appear, walking towards them. The ghost, who seems to be Mrs. Helwig, approaches Chris and yanks him forcibly. Chris sees her, yet the others can't. As Chris hastily moves outside the mansion, Tappert attempts to shoot the ghost he cannot see. Finally, Chris is forced to enter an outhouse, and his troop follows to save him. Surprisingly, the Helwig family's corpse lies there. After a while, they bury all four corpses of the Helwig family. Then, Eugene finds the missing page of the journal that surprisingly switches its language from French to Arabic. He discovers that the Helwig family has been hiding Jews from the Nazis and escorting them to America. Moreover, he finds that Mrs. Helwig performs a vetral curse on those men who watch them die. Later on, Eugene anticipates that the Helwig family will return from the dead due to the writings from the journal he suddenly remembers. Instantly, the Helvigs appear in front of the troop due to the rituals performed by Tappert, whom they curse. Then, the family attacks the troop and attempts to kill them. The troop tries to shoot them multiple times, but unfortunately, it won't go through. Finally, Mrs. Helwig yankingly exhorts Chris to remember his past, making him experience flashbacks. Subsequently, Chris wakes up in a modern hospital bed and attempts to stab the hospital staff out of fear. The doctor calmly restrains him then, Chris pukes after seeing his feet amputated. The doctor exhorts him to remember what happened on his mission in Afghanistan. Recalling the past, Chris and his troop are sent on a mission in Afghanistan. They arrive at a Muslim residence they will protect and send to a secure location in Kabul. 
Meanwhile, Tappert approaches a young blonde boy whom he told Eugene about and gives him his squirrel toy before he enters the residence. After a while, Isis forces suddenly arrive at the place to interrogate the family. But, unfortunately, Chris and his troop are outnumbered. So their CIA handler, Paul, forces them to hide in the wall while the family deals with Isis on their own. As the troop secretly watches and eavesdrops on the Isis force and the family's conversation, they eagerly wait to enter the scene and shoot the Isis, however, Paul stops them. Another Isis vehicle arrives, making it impossible for the troop to go out the wall. Instantly, they witness the gruesome torture and death of the family they failed to protect. The daughter is hanged to death, the son drowns in the sink, and the mother is tortured as she watches her husband burn alive, just like how it was done with the Helwig family. As the Isis forces leave, the troop exits the wall and checks on the family. Sadly, they all died except for the mother. The troop abdicates the mission, yet Paul refuses responsibility, thus, the troop is furious with him. Outside, Tappert emotionally notices the young blonde boy headless. Suddenly, the despairing mother hastily runs towards the troop with a suicide bomb set to explode. But instead, she utters, Vetrolek, which appears to be an ancient curse that forces the troop to endlessly relive their trauma. Back to the present, Chris's memories return. He and his troop are not World War II soldiers but present-day American military officers. They all went into a coma from the explosion and experienced massive injuries. Butchie dies in the real world and warns them beforehand of the simulation being unreal. The doctor explains that the whole situation in the Hellwig's mansion is a product of the World War II simulation to combat the effect of PTSD on the troop. They put the troop in a drug-induced coma to heal them mentally and psychologically. After that, the power in the hospital fluctuates and causes panic among the hospital staff. Finally, Chris comes to the realization that the curse is legitimate and that the machine used for simulation is really haunted. Chris explains to the medical staff that the possible way to lift the curse is to return to the simulation and make things right with the Helvigs. Convinced, the team sends him back but warns him that he'll lose his memory. The movie ends when Chris reawakens in the dark forest before the beginning. He starts all over again but this time, with a goal. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.